Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Teddy. Welcome to my Dallas home. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Teddy Garrigan, and we are in my home in Dallas, Texas. First and foremost, I am a family person. I'm uh, my husband and I have been married a long, long time, and uh, we're uh, 47 years. And uh, my daughter and my son were were a close family and we're a tiny family, we're very small. But so I would say I'm a family person first, but I'm also a businesswoman. And Courtney and I own a store together that was her idea. And we've had this store for 10 years, Coco and Dash in Dallas. And it is a luxury retail decorating store. Uh, we work with designers all over the country because of the way I was raised and, and the way I was brought up, I'm drawn to a mix of really, a, a mix of European and very Southern aesthetic where it's all based on hospitality and family and actually living in your home. I'm not a minimalist, but um, there are times that I'll put something on a table and then decide, you know what, that's too much, I'm gonna take something off for a while. And I do rotate my things out, but I would say definitely I am traditionalist, but I do like little bumps of quirky uh, um, contemporary pieces when it fits my mood. And that's when I change things out. Loved it. My childhood to me is very technicolor. We moved to Europe when I was six for the first time and uh, we lived there and we were exposed to a lot of wonderful architecture and design from you know past centuries and I just absorbed all of that and I was uh, interested mostly in the architecture. I loved it. We lived in an old building and I can remember the stairs were marble and they were rubbed from hundreds of years of people going up and down the stairs, but it was always very um, enticing to me. And my aunt, who, who I'm my namesake aunt, was also very interested in design and she had a beautiful home in East Texas. And so when I would go to her house, I absorbed what she did and uh, she was very much hands-on. I mean, she did her own upholstery sometimes. She was, she was very involved. So between her, her impression on me and the uh, exposure my parents gave us to uh, the way the rest of the world lives was really instrumental in my love of home. I'm named after my Aunt Teddy and after my Aunt Susie. Those were nicknames for them, but those are my given names. I'm Teddy Sue, and that is my birth certificate name. My Aunt Teddy's real name was Elma Dolores, and my Aunt Susie's real name was Hazel Marie, so I could have been Thelma Hazel. Thank God they went for the nicknames. Okay, so this is our entryway. Okay, so many times in a high rise, you have to balance the small size of an entryway with either having this bigger space, which we don't have, and the reason is behind this door is a full uh, pantry, which is, I call the store, because it is everything in there that, you know, all the extra little stuff that if I wanna change something out, it's all, in there but so this entryway follows the original footprint of the uh, the space layout here and what I did is I, I love this Ixel wallpaper it's the Bosphorus romantic Bosphorus I think it's called and so I covered the entryway in this because we are in a high rise and we don't have access to any green spaces and and I love the outdoors so this sort of gave me that uh, option and I hung this wonderful uh, 1960s 
uh, starburst mirror that I'm just very fond of and it has this leather braiding on here and it's it's just such a great juxtaposition. This is a, a 1950s uh, uh, stone sculpture and then it sits on this antique Italian console. And I do want to point out over here that this is this is really fun. This is part of a set that is very special to us. This was given to us by a friend. It's part of a set, a child's set from the 18th century when our first grandchild was born. So we have had it. Now that grandchild is 25. So I just can't not have it in the room. So so when we entertain, we do have this console set up with uh, either some kind of a, a drink or, a, or an hors d'oeuvre uh, offering for guests as they come in before they enter into the living room. All right, so let's head into the living room now, which is our primary uh, entertaining and living space. And this is a rather large room. And what we did is, my husband is a voracious reader. So what people notice when they first walk in here is that we have two large walls. This room is 30 feet long. And we have two uh, large walls of bookcases and God love him, he lets me hang my art over his bookcases because he collects books and I collect art, so that's how we come together with it. And let me point out that uh, in talking about the art, I love to collect decommissioned pieces from museums, and I'm looking and these two are not. This was the first piece that I ever bought. I was 18 years old. I paid $100 for it and uh, it was painted in the 1870s and um, I still love it today and then it hangs above a piece that was painted by the late Harry Lewis who was a very dear friend of ours and this was painted in the 1950s so again I love that juxtaposition and it it sort of speaks to how I decorate a space and Courtney and I my daughter and I love to mix different periods and styles. These are engravings that belong to my mother, and I love these. They're different Italian cities, and they hang over these great chairs that, again, we mix uh, all of our fabrics. We love to mix patterns. The, um, sort of the, the primary piece, I would say, in this room is this cabinet. And this is from Nick Brock here in Dallas, Nick Brock Antiques, who I think is one of the best antique stores in the country. And if you haven't been to Nick Brock, you really should, should go see it. But So this is a cabinet that was custom made that we found at Nick's. And I love the detail in this. And it is a workhorse of a piece. I keep all of my, most of my china and, uh, serving pieces in there that we use on a regular basis. Uh, on top of that, we found these, Courtney and I found these wonderful antique wooden monkeys with overlay of copper. And then these shades, the reason I wanna mention these is they are from a Dallas shop, also the lamp shop, which is, she does beautiful work. And so these are all hand rolled shades that were created for these lamps that uh, she made for us. Also on top of this console are these wonderful creamware urns that were a gift from my husband and a number of years ago. And then this, of course, is just some beautiful coral. And we have it all tied together with that great contemporary piece that was a gift from our daughter. So what we might do is move here. This is our dining area. And because I gave up our dining room when we uh, changed the apartment around, what we've done is we uh, have this table and it really has served great because we have people who will come, we can seat four people really comfortably. I also use this when I work at home and it works well. But if we have more people like for Thanksgiving or a holiday, we will, we have a leaf and we'll open it up and do a buffet. So that works really well for our purposes. So over here, more books and paintings that, um, this is a painting that 
is uh, by an artist named, his last name is Austin, and he, he painted in the 1940s, and uh, I think he, I think he may have died like in the 50s, but uh, he was very popular, and you could see him a lot on the, the West Coast, and I can't remember, I think I found that in a gallery somewhere. It's not a decommissioned piece, and this, this piece is not this real contemporary, but again, you can see how I've mixed them together, and that's just part of what we uh, love to do. Um, I have, <laughs> I didn't realize, this was lying here. This is how, this is how crazy I am, Allison. This is fabric that I'm already considering redoing these chairs in. I don't, isn't that a sickness? I know, I don't know, because I love this fabric. I might have, I think, what I do sometimes is I will have slip covers made to go over something so I can change them out. But um, yes, I just, I just realized that was there. It is beautiful fabric. I truly believe that a space tells you what it wants to be. I think homes do that architecturally, but I think any space, even a brand new high rise, this is not, this building was built in 63, but I think any space you go into, when you spend some time there, it tells you what it wants to be. And so for us, the way we decide where to place furniture is we spend some time in the room. We, first of all, we wanna know how people live. You know, are they formal, are they casual? This may look like we're formal, but we are very casual people. And your, your feet have to be able to go up on anything and you have to be able to sit on anything. There's nothing that's off limits to anyone, our grandchildren or adults. And so we, we love to mix fabrics. We may decide on a color scheme and then we just come up with fabrics. I don't like anything to match perfectly. I always like things to be a little off. For instance, if you look at these fabrics, this is a, a great, a wonderful Fermoy fabric that is on these Baker chairs, but, and these are old chairs, but then this is a, a fabric that really has no relationship as far as anything except it has a different shade of blue in it and the pattern's a, a little bit different scale. But I love the way those two fabrics relate to each other. And then, for instance, this is another good example of how we might decorate. This chair, I paid $10 for each of these chairs a million years ago. But each, these, are de these are upholstered with this little very 19, uh, 80s and 90s and so I had these uh, Matt Lise slips made for them and it totally changed the chairs and they're great to move around for extra seating when we have parties or, or that we just need an extra seat somewhere. Uh, this is a, a, the fabric on here. We like to, to decide where we might use uh, performance fabrics and because we are a uh, very tactile family and feet go up on things, not on these dining chairs, but so if, if I want to change something like this, I just did this little slip on the back so that it adds a little, just a little extra something, but these are performance fabrics and serve uh, the purpose of having some a beautiful design, but also something that is very usable and uh, you just, you really can't do anything to hurt it. I love club chairs. They're always, to me, universally comfortable and they fit anyone. You know, but I'm someone who doesn't have very long legs and, and so I like things that are a little bit lower, but I also love to have an arm. These are, are uh, beautiful club chairs that we had made and upholstered in this uh, wonderful fabric that tells a story. And we use these blues and greens, and I threw in this little bit of aubergine mohair to, to pull out some of that color in the fabric. But they're just, they're, people are always drawn to these chairs, and I think it is because of the design, but it, 
work so well with what goes on in this whole area. This is a, an Italian, I actually think it's Venetian now that, that I'm thinking about this, uh, secretary that is painted and I love it. And this came from an estate in New York City from Christie's uh, and um, it's just a piece that I love. It's filled again with my um, Blanc de Chine and creamware that I collect. In here, there are pieces of my mother's and of mine that, and gifts from, uh, from my best friend who just also passed away this last year. And so when I look at these things, it evokes a lot of wonderful feelings and I know that I'm in my space. So the green table, the green, tra it's a tray table and I bought it. It's one of those things because I believe like most designers do that if you see something and you just fall in love with it and, and you can afford it, you should buy it and you will find a place for it. It is here literally because I had no other spot for it. It is a different shade of green than you see, but again, that goes back to what uh, we love in the way that we decorate at Coco and Dash is that things, we don't want everything to match. I don't like much of anything to match. And so that sits there and it just keeps your eye refreshed is, is the way I, I think of it because it's, it's, your eye picks up the nuances between this green and the malachite green on the secretary. And then in front of it is uh, one of the little chairs, the little 18th century chairs that uh, was a gift uh, from our friend and uh, our grandchildren have all used these. This is a, a custom couch that uh, we had made uh, through Coco and Dash and ever well, everything, the, the lampshades, the pillows, the, the upholstered pieces, we are, are for the most part new. Uh, the side accent chairs and stuff are not, but the other pieces, I did go ahead and I decided I wanted a whole new uh, look and I just wanted to do something fun. So this is covered in, you cannot go wrong in a green velvet. Green is my favorite color. And to me, green velvet in a room or any, whether it's linen or, uh, mohair, whatever, it just adds such a wonderful, uh, uplifting feeling to a space. And we did these uh, custom pillows and the, of course, the ubiquitous uh, tiger pillows. And then we have more art behind. This is one of, I paint, this is one of my paintings. Uh, this is a painting that my husband bought that I also love. It's very calming and, and relaxing. This is a painting that I bought in New York City in the 1980s. I don't even like clowns. I do not know what happened, but this felt so French to me. I had it framed, but the little painting, I bought it at a gallery and it just, there was something, they weren't creepy clowns. And I loved the colors, the aubergines and the lilacs and blues. And I just noticed there's a little blue and white check in there too. When we do a, an area like this where there is a chair, we always, always put a drinks table next to it. Some kind of table where someone of course can put a drink or a cup of coffee. And in our case, it's usually a, a cup of coffee or an iced tea, but we always make sure that that's within easy reach. And this, we had this wonderful, uh, fun camel table and so we put that next to an English chair which is not something that you might think of doing but it works well and then this is covered in this wonderful uh, uh, linen from Ralph Lauren that is a, a very muted animal print. So when we go over this way this is probably to me, the most important piece in my room is this little table. This was one of the first pieces of furniture that my husband and I bought in our first home when we were first married in our 20s. And it's the only surviving piece from our original 
living room for some reason. I think I just switched stuff out. But I had Barry Martin here in Dallas do this beautiful tortoiseshell finish on it. And it just is, it really is um, a very special piece. And so I would encourage you, if you have something that you think this is beat up or the legs are scratched or whatever, find a wonderful painter. If you're in Dallas, Barry Martin painting does these beautiful uh, faux finishes and you will have a little jewel of a piece that still has that wonderful uh, emotional connection, but it also is updated and, and brought into a, uh, to be a wonderful design piece. The coffee table is an old Gracie table. And uh, it is also a workhorse. My grandsons have grown up with their, sitting on a sofa with their feet on this table. It, the only thing I ever asked them was to take their shoes off, but their feet were always on this table and it has, has held up so beautifully. And I like a coffee table that is pretty robustly uh, decorated. I think it's, you know, we don't really use a coffee table to sit coffee cups on. Uh, in our home, we don't. But I do love it as a place to show very special things. And to me, I love to have a large, something large in the center to ground the coffee table. And then, of course, we're book people. So I always have books that need to be somewhere. And I like to balance a coffee table with books usually on either end. Uh, you'll see a couple other tables that I've done uh, a little bit differently, but, uh, and then I just add in these pieces that are, you know, these are all old pieces that were, you know, gifts that, uh, or sentimental pieces from family that we've had uh, forever and ever. And I have a, over here, on this Gracie table, I have this Mexican uh, pottery or terracotta plate from, I have a set of those from my friend Wynn, but I love to put those out. And uh, Courtney gave me this beautiful um, uh, incense burner and I love being able to look at it. So, you know, it just gives you, then I always add a candle, but it gives you, when you're in a space by yourself, and I sit in this room often and drink coffee in the morning and answer emails, and and I love to have that that beautiful setting in front of me, and also my feet are usually on this coffee table, and it's just a it's it's pretty and it it gives you a good feeling of home and reminds you of special people and and special feelings. This is a pair of paintings. You heard me say a while ago that that uh, I love decommissioned paintings. And what that means is that museums uh, periodically will go through their inventory and determine that a piece is not necessarily something that, that they want in the museum anymore. It doesn't mean the piece isn't good, it just means that you know, whether it's for budgetary reasons or whatever. Generally, these are not expensive paintings. You're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars. This is a pair of paintings by an artist uh, from um, Maryland. And I loved them. I love anything with snow in it. So this was a winter scene. And then here's a, uh, uh, a harbor scene and I love those paintings. These are the original frames that they came in. And it's just a way if you uh, keep your eye out and you research that you can find museums that decommission these paintings. And there's always something very interesting that's available. And, and I, it's one of my favorite things to look for. And a lot of galleries will carry them. And we see them, of course, at different antique shows. And uh, usually they have some kind of, of paper that goes with them that tells you this is where they were from. And, you know, this is the artist. So uh, they just make a great addition. I'm a fan of paintings that are more vintage looking, uh, even, even though they may be 
uh, like a modern uh, subject matter. I still, I love that vintage look with, you know, the antiques and the, the new upholstery in a room. Sitting on this table, it's another Tom Brett table that is a bleached uh, rosewood, weighs a ton, but he was known for bleaching this wood and I loved this table. It's got all of the carvings of deer and elephants and, and I'm an animal lover. So you've probably noticed I have elephants, monkeys, horses, dogs, everything in this room. And then these monkeys are one of my favorite things. And Courtney and I kind of, uh, we didn't even flip a coin. I think I just sort of said, I get them, I'll be gone first. So uh, these are vintage night from the 1950s or 60s. They're Italian uh, terracotta and they're glazed and, and I truly love them. And then I just use this French toll piece in the center with them, but they're very, they're just happy. Nobody ever comes in this room that they aren't taken with these monkey musicians. And they remind me of the old Meisen pieces. Now we're gonna go into my husband's study, which was formerly the guest bedroom. And um, in this room, again, I have bookcases with some of his books. The, uh, he still has room. I always try and leave room for him to add books because he has, you'll see there are books on chairs and he just, he, he loves that. So uh, another green velvet sofa because you can't go wrong with them. And uh, we did these uh, chairs that are replicas of the chairs that were on FDR's uh, yacht, the Sequoia, when he was president. And I covered them in these, uh, this fabric with the ferns because I'm, again, I love ferns. And then this room to me is really special. It's very masculine. I love coming in here. There are pieces in here. Uh, my father was career military. I think I may have mentioned that. And, and um, he, was, uh, he was an amazing man. And uh, so I have a lot of his pieces like this one that were, uh, these were awards that were given to him and uh, presentations from different countries. And uh, we have them spread kind of around the room and those are matchbooks that he picked up from different places all over the world and uh, so it just I really love that that the two men that are the most important men in my life are kind of combined in this room because this building faces our apartment faces the west side of the building we use these uh, wonderful natural fiber uh, shades that block the heat and the light when it's real bright in here. So uh, those with the, we did just the, I left these curtains. They were curtains that were in here before and I think they look great with this. They're pretty muted. And then back here I have this beautiful Chinese chest that uh, is topped with uh, green wear that you'll see in the morning room that I have a big collection of. But, uh, and then one of my friend Wynn Morton's uh, uh, lanterns. And then, you know, the, I love the columns. We did the columns and I put the big gazing balls on top of those just because I thought it added a little light and, you know, it gives the illusion of more height in this room. These ceilings are eight and a half feet tall, so they're not, uh, vast ceilings and um, then the rest of this is you know all uh, this was Wynn Morton's this was his wingback chair and I had it recovered and my husband you should have seen his face when he saw this trim <laughs> but I love it and we call it Mopsy and um, then I have a, a pair of these uh, antique leather footstools one's an elephant one's a donkey over here and uh, then some this I guess this is the only new piece of art these other pieces are all pieces that we've had forever those are Jay Gould pieces a TV is just a normal part of life anymore it's almost like a cell phone and most people want a large television I would rather 
just have something beautiful like we did here to set the TV on and it, it is what it is. It's, it, you're gonna have a television, you want it to have comfortable seating and my husband loves to sit in here and watch a game and this piece is one of my favorite pieces. Again, I did not have a place for this when I bought it. It is from the 1970s and it's a tessellated horn console and it has these uh, little drawers in it that uh, are uh, trimmed in brass and it also has a matching mirror that I don't have hung. But uh, it's the perfect size for this television set. The only place I would not want a television, I would not, we don't do televisions in bedrooms, we discourage that uh, for a number of health reasons and just sort of general sense of of calm, but uh, you know, I think if you've got a room that you prefer to to sit in, that's the best place to put a television. We don't have to have a television in every single room. Uh, it's it, especially if they're these big monsters like these. One of the things that I love to do is I have this big basket and I keep it on a lower shelf under this table and. They're loose photos. I took most of these out of albums. My son is a baby, Courtney is a teenager, family friends, our uh, friends at the farm. The, all of these things, me as a child in Germany, the, my grandkids love digging through this box and it's so much fun to see them switching photos around and sharing them and it's a great place to, to compile your photos, so to speak, but you're not having to put them in those books that you're generally not gonna pull out anyway. And this allows people, we have friends who, who will come in and go through these photos. You know, they'll just start poking through and seeing uh, what they can find. But, but I think if you have a really pretty basket like this and or container of some kind, it's a great way to corral all those photos and uh, have them where they're accessible and you get to enjoy them. This is the morning room. And this really is generally people's favorite room. It is a small room. It's I think 15 by 13, something like that. So it's not a big room, but this was originally my dining room and I changed it because I wanted a place for uh, uh, us to have uh, more seating for entertaining. And we were finding that we actually were doing more kind of buffet type dinners, even though I love to set a table, which is why I want my dining room back. But so we, we converted this room. There used to be a door here. We closed that up. And um, this space, is really, we call it the, the green room, which is interesting because there's so much blue and white, but I love, I love malachite green and I collect a lot of uh, greenware. And so this cabinet, this is a, an English chinoiserie cabinet that's an antique. It's not a very big cabinet, but in this I have, all, this is my little dachshund Henry is in this, little uh, Egyptian box, there's his picture, and I have everything, I have, this was part of a set presented to my father, this was uh, from Wynn Morton, uh, our family friend from my uh, parents when we lived in Europe, and um, I traveled a lot on my former career, I traveled a lot in the Middle East, and so there are things from that, and so everything in there also has a memory or uh, a reason for being there. So these prints that you see here are the same prints that Lee Radswell had in her, these are museum prints, they're, they're, these are new, that she had in her Paris apartment and then ultimately gave to Tori Birch. But we love these and I have a set of 12 of them and um, I just, I think they bring so much life and color to this space that I knew that was what I wanted to go on that wall. We spend most of our time in here. The uh, It's full of 
things that are especially important to me that that I love that um, this is a painting that was done by uh, Wynn's partner and and our dear friend Harry Lewis and this was uh, painted in the 1950s and these were uh, part of their Majolica collection that hung in their home and then as you come over here this is just a wonderful little uh, camel table that I loved. It's cockamamie and kind of quirky looking and then more vintage paintings and then this is one of a pair of these grotto consoles that Courtney and I loved and we had these faux tortoise shell uh, tops made for them so that they're painted. I generally prefer painted uh, woods to to a, a, a natural marble or uh, uh, stone of any kind. I just, I love the fact that it has a human hand to it and it's just a little more relaxed and quirky to me. Then all of the, the seating in here is very comfortable. It's, everything's meant to relax and, and just kind of ease out of your day. And then these are some of my design books that I keep, another gigantic TV. Uh, you know, the, these can close. The truth is I never close them, but they could if I, if I needed to. It is a cheetah carpet. Yes, it's Stark by Stark and it uh, is a cheetah wool carpet. And this is my favorite rug in, that I use either in projects or for myself. I, it is, it's just almost indestructible. It never looks messy and it reads like a neutral. So I really do love it and yet it has a little bit of a, a wink to it, to me. Okay, so this is the principal bedroom. And what we did, if you've noticed, all of the walls in this apartment are done in a soft white. And the reason that we did that is because right before we moved back in, there was a flood in the building. So I drew the line at putting uh, wallpaper up and we didn't even paint, but also in our design projects, a lot of times we have used, and, and I prefer a soft white wall because I think it, it uh, shows the fabrics and the, the furnishing so beautifully. But we, um, uh, ha we did this uh, beautiful headboard and it has the matching base to it and the bed hangings and then of course these uh, you have to have your reading lamps and um, we this, this is our this is all we use this is we use a sheet and this it looks heavy but it's very light and uh, I always do white bedding and it's it's my favorite and um, not lots of pillows I'm not a pillow a person that wants a ton of pillows stacked up on the bed because then you just have to drag them off at the end of the day but uh, so we just have have a minimal number of pillows. So these are prints that are also from the the gallery that made the prints in the morning room. And these are Japanese birds. And I always found these very soothing. So I have those in the bedroom. And then these were my mother's lamps. And my mother uh, bought these in uh, Italy when I was a little girl and it was our first or second I can't remember when we were living there I guess our first time and um, so they're now at my home and then I had these beautiful shades that Melissa Woody made for me from uh, the lamp shop and they're just perfection and they're trimmed in this little tiny blue and white check and uh, it's it's just a, a really pleasant fun thing to look at in the evening when we're lying in bed reading. Then I have all of these things. Are These are gifts from my daughter, my husband. Um, they're just little tiny things. I, I love littles and that can be um, kind of a problem. So this was my mother's chair and 
Ultimately, I will have it reupholstered. I just, right now, I just want it to be, it was in her bedroom and I just enjoy seeing it. And again, this is a lamp from Wynn Morton and I love having those there. The two of them were very, very dear friends. Um, I have this little desk in here. I do not ever sit at this desk. I don't think your bedroom should be used for anything other than sleeping and relaxing and uh, so I don't really use it as, as uh, workspace. So this is my dressing room and bathroom. And uh, it's, it's very simple, lots of white, because I like very clean bathrooms and kitchens. I keep it pretty simple. I like it simple. I like, you know, I don't keep a lot of stuff sitting around and I find that it's more soothing and I've got so much going on in a day-to-day -day routine that I love to, to come in here and it, it just all feels pretty calm. I think one of the secrets to a happy union with your husband or spouse or partnership is definitely separate bathrooms. Um, we have a rule in the Garrigan household that this bathroom is off limits to any boys. That includes husband, grandsons, guests. All the males use the male bathroom. Only girls can come in here. And to this day, my grandsons will not step foot in this bathroom. They know to go over to their papas. So it's, you know what, I just, I like knowing that this is a tiny little space where I know where everything is. And uh, it's, it's just, it feels very private. It's very private. So this is truly a working kitchen. This is the original footprint to this kitchen. And uh, we really made very few changes to it. And again, considered uh, we were getting ready to redo the kitchen, truthfully. And there was an incident on the top three floors that. Uh, they have spent two and a half years uh, having to rebuild some apartments up there. So it, we just kind of put a halt on it because there's so much construction going on in the building. But I love this kitchen. It is, it, it works perfectly for entertaining. It works perfectly for just the two of us. Most of the, the time we dine out or we'll do something simple at home and um, so it serves those purposes, but it also, it really does work great for entertaining. And this piece slides to that end of the kitchen and opens up and then it becomes like a little beverage station when we need it. And then I brought in this uh, piece. I've had this for years. It's actually, it's an old baker piece that is four pieces. It was, it's called a bachelor's set and so you could have like these could be used as nightstands and as a dresser and the components all change spaces uh, places but i use it you can see how healthy my food is i use it to store uh food and and as a pantry and then um i keep uh, the silver that i use every day in here. And then I'll show you my actual china cabinet. These were open shelves when we we uh, were here before, or open areas, they were all mirrored. And so I had these cabinets built to hold um, some of my china and I have a lot. I, that's another thing that I tend to collect. You know what, my favorite piece of china, this was the china that when Dan and I got married, this is Schumann and they don't even make it anymore. And uh, I love it because it, I mean, talk about grand millennial. The, it's just, it's happy, it's fun flowers. And, uh, and my mother gave me a lot of the pieces to it. And I use it, I use it a lot. And then I use it with these little, I have a whole dessert set of these. This is probably right up there with that one because these these were a gift from my mother's, I think for my, I wanna say my 30th birthday. 
and um, so and I use those every chance I get. So I am anxious to have a dining room again because I do love to set a table and um, I continue to purchase those kinds of things. I love cocktail napkins. I love uh, all the things that anybody who entertains loves to, to use and I'd rather use those things on a table, really the decorative items almost more than uh, a lot of flowers because they have such good memories. My favorite thing about my home is my family. Uh, when we are here, everybody is always relaxed. My home, and I think this goes back again to uh, growing up as uh, a military kid, your home is the most important investment that you'll ever make. And, and I know that when I moved so often, Allison, my mother would, I don't know how she did it, but she could transform wherever we were into our home where things felt familiar. And even though she added new things in from different cultures, it always felt like home. So to me that I still have that aesthetic and I have things of my mother's, I have uh, things of dear friends that are no longer uh, with us. And uh, to me, the, the most, I guess the most important things would be family and feeling super secure and relaxed when I walk in here at the end of the day. And for my husband, my husband is an attorney and he is, uh, uh, he really works a lot and nothing makes me happier than when he comes home and says, I love walking in our house. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.